This is episode three of my YouTube channel. Today is going to be more of a sewing podcast. My last episode was a knitting focused podcast and I'm, I'm undecided if I'll combine them or if I'll do them separately. It kind of depends on how much sewing and knitting I have at the specific time. But at the moment, I think I have enough to separate them for now. I actually thought I might start kind of at the beginning of my sewing journey, like going through the outfits, the dresses and things that I made, which I did think later, I'm just gonna be showing you so many things that have mistakes or that I've ripped out. But then I thought that's kind of the journey of sewing, isn't it? That's the, what you go through when you learn to sew or learn a new ho hobby. So hopefully, you guys are all on board with that. Um, I mean, I'm still learning. I only started in January 2020. So I've definitely tried a few things, but uh, they haven't all succeeded, <laughs> but some have. So on that note, let's begin. Um, I'm currently wearing my love note, but I will talk about this more in a knitting podcast. And I have my Betty dress, which you can't see, but I'll insert a clip somewhere here. It used to be a dress and now it's a skirt, but I'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, I just thought I might introduce you a little bit to my garment making beginnings, as um, many of you, all of you, <laughs> will not know anything about it. So I basically learnt to sew in, um, I was about to say 1920, that's a lie. <laughs> In 2020, in January, I saw a beautiful dress by Rosary Apparel on her YouTube, and I'll link it down below. It's a free pattern. She has since then um, actually made dresses that she's selling, but back then she was she hadn't got her shop, and this dress was so beautiful, and I just wanted to make it there and then, but I didn't know how to sew. <laughs> Problem number one. So when my mum visited me in January 2020, she um, showed me how to use my sewing machine that I had purchased with full enthusiasm, but I hadn't actually learned how to sew. So she taught me, we cut up the, we have some really, really long curtains, because here in Berlin most people have very long, long, very high windows, but my apartment doesn't have such high, so we don't have such high ceilings, so the fabric was just flowing onto the floor. So we chopped those up and uh, that's how I learned to actually physically use my sewing machine and so, And then we made a few things together. I think I made some chicken lavender bags. I'll try and take a picture and put them in. They're very cute. And mm, I think, oh, I also made a beanbag frog, which I can show you as well. Um, and then, then I tried my hand at the rosary dress just using the leftover fabric, actually, from the curtains. <laughs> I don't know if I still have it. it. It wasn't wearable. I don't think I learned how to install the zip or anything then. But after I did that, I then decided to get on to sewing the Betty dress, which is technically what I'm wearing. Um, it was a bit enthusiastic, seeing as it eats fabric. It, uh, it has about three meters of fabric in it and I didn't really know what I was doing. So that's the recipe for disaster. But excuse me, it's getting my tea, vital fuel. And I bought the pattern and it comes with two necklines. So there's a boat neckline and a V-neck. And I made the boat neck. It's um, a pattern by Sew Over It. And it comes in sizes eight to 20 and I'll try and put the measurements here somewhere. And I did the smaller size, but because I was so new, I still wasn't very spot on with my seam allowances. So I think I went a bit skewiff there because it didn't quite work. It was a bit of a strange construction on my part. But 
I did come up with, um, come across the one problem which was the facings because they have an all-in-one facing and that was just that was too much it probably still is to be honest I still don't quite understand all-in-one facings if anyone has any tips or any uh, YouTube links please do share because I'd love to make this dress again but the all-in-one facing I just I just do not get it but I know that I'm not alone because I saw that many people had written in the comments of the Sew Over It YouTube channel the uh, tutorial she did a lot of other people didn't get it either I think the problem was that the woman whose name I cannot remember sorry um, she used the same fabric for the facing and for the, the dress so it was really hard to tell which was which in the video but I would like to give it another go um, I made the dress again but this the next time I didn't use the full, skirt, full circle skirt because I wasn't really sure if it was going to work like for the second time so I'll insert a video or picture here it's a really cute fabric it's I can't quite tell if they're strawberries or raspberries but it's very cute uh, anything with fruit on I want to wear it animals fruit leaves mushrooms just dress me head to toe <laughs> one sec so this dress I actually did a little um, combination I looked for a different skirt pattern so I found this Annie A-line skirt which is by Sew This Pattern and I just used that A-line skirt and combined it with the uh, Betty boat neck top so I followed it but I didn't do the facings I actually used bias binding to go around no no I'm lying my first dress I rehacked and added bias binding for the armholes and the neckline after failing with the facing and then this dress or wherever I put the picture um, that one I actually lined with a different fabric and um, that one has more of a green fabric underneath so probably a terrible choice because it kind of shows through a little bit in the light and I also learned that you should probably cut your lining fabric slightly um, smaller because just this morning when I was ironing the dress so I could show you a video I realized that it's it's just clumping together at the bottom when you iron it flat all the fabric goes down to the bottom and scrunches up like I haven't worn this dress that much because as I mentioned the uh, fit is a bit off and again I noticed online that people have also or other people have also had this problem where it's kind of a gappy at the back it's like it's there's too much fabric at the back um, I've seen a few people mention it and one woman did a, a video like a, how to hack this post making the dress so and I think also um, she changed, showed you how to do it on the pattern so I did that on this dress so I took out like I pinched out some of the fabric I think I basically did a dart and pinched it out and um, made it smaller so it wouldn't like be all every time you did this basically this big gap would appear and it was really annoying so not sure if that's like, fixable how, how to go about fixing it basically but I would like to try again and I have some fabric but I'm a bit nervous to go through that debacle of in all-in-one facings <laughs> um, what else do I want to say about it um, I oh yeah I can mention how I hacked the um, dress into the skirt so it does have a 16 inch invisible zipper in the dress which is the like that was probably the best zipper I've ever done and it was it was quite heartbreaking actually to rip it out with my seam ripper because ever since I have never made it so beautiful <laughs> I don't know what I do but it just it hit the top of the dress so perfectly and then when I ripped it down and redid it, not so perfect. <laughs> but hey ho, I took a lesson from Gertie Hirsch. I will try and link her video below because it was amazing. 
she did a, a gathered skirt tutorial and she did a, a lapped zipper and a waistband. So obviously this dress didn't have a waistband, so the leftover fabric I used to make a waistband for this. And then I used the YouTube uh, tutorial on how to do a lapped zipper and um, hook and eye, that's the word. So I did that, I did a little practice actually. I, I hacked up the original dress that I did, not dress, skirt that I did for that gathered skirt because it went a bit wrong. It was, I think, my very first skirt actually was a gathered skirt. I've just managed, everything was spot on, but I gathered all of the gathers in one place and I just didn't realise what I was doing. I think every time I went through the sewing machine, I just bunched them or I spread them out a bit because I thought I was going wrong when in fact it was fine. And yeah, it was a disaster. I never wore it, so I hacked it up into this and I practiced with the lapped zipper and hook and eye on this one. So this is just a little mini circle skirt and I did the hack at the back. Unfortunately, I completely misjudged my size. I, I think I added an extra inch and that was a bit of a boo-boo because now it's too big. But hey ho, this one fits and that was the main, the main point. So that is what I did with this one. So now I have a beautiful circle skirt that I can spin around in because that's obviously the point of circle skirts. And uh, yeah, now I can wear it because I could not wear the original dress. It was it was so beautiful, but it just it was so gappy. And then I I don't know if it was me or again I don't know if it's the pattern or my choice of size, but the armpits were like right up in there, and it was so uncomfortable. And I never wore it, and I felt really guilty because I I don't like having clothing that I don't wear. Just having stuff that's not used. So hacked it up and now I can wear it and it's all pretty so aww. and my next topic is mending I, I wanted to add this to my podcast because I think it might be a really good way to keep me on top of my mending pile I tend to just put it aside just I'll do that later <laughs> and then never actually do it and I see it it's not like I've forgotten I just don't feel so inspired which is weird because I still find the same like sense of accomplishment when I fix something like now I can use it I fixed it <laughs> but I'm hoping this channel can help keep me accountable and maybe it'll inspire you guys as well to uh, get your mending kit out because I think it's a really good skill to have and I think it's a really good way to make sure that you keep your clothes in use, in use, in rotation, I think that's what I want to say. And I think as well, some of you guys may be able to help me out with a few things. So that's also handy, if you don't mind, of course. Um, the first thing I mended this week was a button on my husband's shorts for like the billionth time, <laughs> but I have just got a new technique so I'm hoping that th this button sticks. I was slightly concerned I put it off centre after doing it and then I'd have to undo all this extra like, winding of thread, but so it seems good, it seems okay. <laughs> and the second thing I mended was a neighbour's coat. She somehow ripped a hole between the arm and the body of her coat, so I fixed that up. Luckily enough, I had the right coloured thread I think I need to get some more, but I'm very aware that I have like a yarn collection and a fabric collection and a needle collection. And I think it's probably quite easy to get a all the colors of the threads collection. <laughs> we'll see. Um, what else did I fix? Oh, didn't fix, would like help with fixing. If any of you guys know how to fix this, I will be eternally grateful. My husband's shorts got annihilated. I don't know what he did, but hello. 
there is an enormous hole rip through his shorts uh, and I don't know how to fix it. I can fix something like if there was a rip in the seam, I just use an invisible stitch, perfectly fine. If there was some, like a button, obviously, but this hole straight through the bottom, I don't know how to fix it. If I just turn it in and sew it, it's going to make the trousers a really weird shape. And if I just put a patch on it, then it's just going to look rubbish. <laughs> Do you guys have any ideas? That would be very helpful. Please send help. And my next mending slash finished project kind of combined. It's a bit weird that I'm going to show you my underpants on the internet. <laughs> but I made these pants by, what's her name? Madeline, Madeline Intimates. They're the high-waisted Noel trousers, eh, trousers? Underpants. They're a free pattern. I did get a bit confused because there's no instructions and when you go through it, it like you download the uh, inst oh, bleh, what is happening to my words? When you download the pattern it says there's no instructions but if you subscribe to a website oh, what's it called? Craftsy or something? If you subscribe to this website then you can watch the videos and go through it but it's a paid subscription and I don't particularly want to pay for a subscription to know how to sew a pair of pants so I use the uh, Acacia oh, oh I'm forgetting, I'm blanking on the woman's name the Acacia pants, I'll write it in somewhere I just followed the instructions for how she put those together they are different but I just winged it and it worked so it's alright but this was my first foray into um, knit fabrics and I thought all was going well because I managed to get everything sewn in, the elastic was sewn in. I did have troubles trying to guesstimate the, how much elastic I needed because to my memory it doesn't state how many centimetres or inches of elastic you need. So again, I refer to the other pattern, and I have it here somewhere, I have a collection of ones that went wrong. This is the Acacia one, and they went very wrong because I used just some cheap elastic that was the worst choice ever for underwear. So I have to rip out the uh, elastic for this one. But I just took the measurements from here and put them into the Noel. But the first time I did it, I thought they look like massive granny pants. <laughs> but they're really nice when they're on, I swear. <laughs> but I didn't do this, this one well at all. It's so floppy, it just like hangs off of my torso. But gotta work on that one as well. The third pair, third time lucky. These worked. But I managed to get the elastic all sewn in, and that's grand. But then when you had to do the top stitching over top, it just goes ding and has come apart. And I don't know why. It's happened on this pair. I don't think I'll be able to. Because it wants to focus on my face. All of the over stitching has come off. And I don't know why. I'm using a zigzag, obviously, because it's a knit fabric. And so far, it's it's staying, it's keeping the elastic in. I can't believe I'm putting my underpants on the internet. <laughs> but, and look at this fabric, isn't it amazing? Ah, oh, I love mushroom fabrics of every shape and kind. So, yes, if any of you know why the over stitching, I've lost my vocabulary, people. <laughs> The, I don't know, yeah, overstitching, decorative, I guess. Why is that coming undone when it's a zigzag stitch on knit fabric and the other stitches are fine? Like, it holds together in all of the vital places. So, I don't know. 
I really want to make one of the bras. I think it's called the Barlet Bra Let. Barlet Bra Let by Madeline Intimates. Also a free pattern. But I just don't understand, once again, I don't understand the instructions. And I think I was just getting a bit overwhelmed with it all. That you have to buy all these individual pieces, like the, the straps are different to the elastic that goes around here, which is different to the elastic that goes around here. And then it doesn't have the words, words, Emily. The, the part, the fastener. It doesn't have one in that pattern. So then I found a different pattern, but it doesn't have instructions. So I've just kind of put that to the side temporarily until I figured out the pants situation. When I know why it's the elastic, the stretch stitch is coming undone, then I will go forward with my bra journey, bralette journey, and see where that takes me. So I think I'll wrap that up there. Thank you very much for watching, and if you have any comments or any tips, please do share in the comments below. I would gladly appreciate some uh, advanced so as help with this and if you're watching for the sewing I'll try and get another one up in sometime this month and if you're here for the knitting that one will also be coming in a couple of weeks just got to get some of the projects a bit further on I am um, I have a sock that is taking me forever but I'm really enjoying it so keep going with that I'm off on a little mini holiday can you call it a holiday? I'm visiting my in-laws over the weekend, so I should be able to get some knitting done. Definitely not sewing, but I have got some plans in the, in the works for some more sewing. I'm just so sad that summer is coming to an end because I have all these summer dresses that I want to make. <sighs> but alas, I'll have to try and make them in a way that I can wear them throughout autumn, <laughs> if that is possible. We'll see. Anyway, I'm rambling. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time. Bye bye!